about the movie itself. I watched the trailer and I was scared. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> the uh, the funny thing about directing horror films is if you do your job right, everybody hates you because they're scared. <laughs> So, I was scared. What what made you want to do that? Well, um, there's sort of two stories. There's the film itself, the feature film that we're going to have made. Um, and then there's the sort of project of doing a teaser film and releasing it through social media. And the reason we wanted to do Shadow Lurkers as a teaser film first is because the horror and thriller genre, those fans are so passionate, almost more so than any other genre. And they're very internet-based. You go to huge events like Comic-Con, and you realize that these people are networked through places like Google+. And, and so we thought, why not start it with a fan swell from the beginning and include them from the beginning? So by the time the movie gets to the theaters, they've actually experienced the making of literally from the very beginning. Getting a bit of an echo, sorry. The Shadow Lurkers. Yes, the Shadow Lurkers. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, from your scale, then, what is it like to even put that together? Because, you know, being here in Wilmington, we see a lot of films, you know, kind of, um, you know, taking place here, but nothing to maybe the level that you're doing. You know, you don't see that a lot of times because you've got special effects and you've got these creatures. And I think it's really, it's got to be difficult, right? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, uh, it, is, it is difficult, but it's also, and I don't want to sound cheesy, but it's a passion of mine. So it's one of those things where it is incredibly hard, but you're so into it, you forget how painful it is. <laughs> um, this project, we happened to film in uh, Richmond, Virginia, where Spielberg was shooting a big Lincoln epic. So I actually stole a bunch of his actors for this project. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and then we brought it back to Los Angeles to do all the post-production where I am now. And um, I just connected with friends that I've worked in the commercial world. And um, the effects were done by a place called Unit Zero. They have done movies like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and um, Sucker Punch in 2012. So they're amazing effects team. And I just brought in individuals that I had worked with on one you know, job or another. And together, we managed to pull it off, I, I think, I hope. <laughs> Feels good. Well, I'm wondering then, and feel free, anyone who wants to hop in and ask a question, but I'm wondering, you know, like, what is the, is that really common to have like a teaser film and then hoping that it gets, you know, to a feature film level, or how does that all work? It, it's actually very uncommon. Um, I've got one other feature film under my belt, a movie called How to Rob a Bank with Nick Stahl was just in the news, he had disappeared, <laughs> uh, and Erica Christensen, and David Carradine right before he passed. Um, and that was done the traditional way, you know, a submission of a script to places like William Morris, and then producers get on it, and it goes to the traditional route. This time, um, I really wanted to do things differently, because I had a vision for the movie, and before it got to, a, um, I do have a script, and before it got to the studio, I wanted to not only give them the the blank pages, but show them what the movie's going to feel like and give them a taste of it. And my theory is if I could do that, we might be able to make the film more to my original vision. And then the, building in a fan community from the start, I think, is really going to be a big part of the movie. So the teaser movie seems like it's uh, putting the cart before the horse, but I think it might be a powerful marketing tool. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's really original. Um, do you have kind of a goal on what you would like to, I guess, to see happen? I mean, have you set any yeah. kind of, like, number, uh, you know, numbers in your head or anything? Like, we'd like to see this get, like, a million hits or, you know, whatever, and then we're going to take it here. Or tell me, I guess, what your, what your plan is. No, absolutely. Um, there, remember the movie District 9? Uh, it came out. Um, the guy who made that was also sort of an early or first-time director, and he worked for Peter Jackson, and he did a lot of effects work, and he had been pitching that movie forever to the studios, and they, they weren't buying it. And Peter Jackson, who does movies like Lord of the Rings and King Kong, he suggested to him, he said, look, use our resources and make a three-minute version and show the studios, and maybe they'll get it. And the second he did, um, I think on YouTube it got 50,000 hits or something, and the studios went nuts. So my goal was this 50,000 number, um, and within a first day, I was chatting with some people online, and I said, 
I'm hoping to reach 50,000. And Edwin piped in and said, no, no, I think we're at 60 or 70,000 already. And now it's 128,000 people. And this is only in the first few days. The reason this is relevant is I can then take that to the studios in this next week and say, this is our fan base. Before we even make the movie, you know you have a dedicated, loyal following. And I think that's powerful, especially in this economy. I think Hollywood's looking for new ways to connect with fans. And I think by building that fan base ahead of time, um, I think it makes them feel more comfortable. I, it's just so, a theory, but so far it's working. So do you think that you'll go to the studios next week then? Is that how that works? Oh uh, Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a few people that have already called. Um, I will come back on the show and let you know who they are when I have the meeting. Um, but yeah, they, they're really interested and some really, really cool people. Um, for example, if you watch the show Entourage, there's a, here's my hint. There's a character on there who's actually a real person, and he seems to like the movie. <laughs> I saw that. I'm just going to spoil Can we spoil it? It was Turtle. Well, actually, it's funny you should say that. Um, it was Turtle, not Jerry Fer oh. No, no, it is. Jerry Ferrara, who plays Turtle, um, got a hold of it and tweeted it out to fans. So that was huge. Um, but funny enough, you just reminded me <laughs> the guy who plays Ari um, on, on the show, he's a real agent. And I think we may have piqued his interest. Um, so it's funny, both Turtle and the, the real life Ari. Um, so, so far, so good. Fingers crossed. There's a lot to do. But. The more, I mean, with this overwhelming response, the more we can show them this response, I think um, the better we're off. So, okay, now I've got to ask you this because we've kind of talked about like the, the movie itself but, or the kind of the logistics of it all, but yeah. were you scared of the dark as a kid? Is that where this comes from? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yes, I, I will humbly and embarrassingly admit this comes from a, a story I had when I was about, about 10 years old. Middle of the night, woke up to go to the bathroom, pitch black. I sort of sleepily walk into the bathroom, turn on the light, and go to the bathroom. So my back's turned to the door, and I'm, forgive me for saying, in the middle of peeing, and all of a sudden, click, the light turns off. And I turn around, and I swear to you, I saw this dark, shadowy figure coming at me, and I screamed, holy terror. My whole family came running in, turned on the lights. And they could swear, they kept telling me, they swore I was sleepwalking, but I'm telling you, it was the most real experience, and that fear stuck with me. Um, and it was only last year that I was thinking, I want to do a thriller, but I want something that's really basic that everybody can relate to, and the way that Jaws scared generations out of the water. I wanted something that every kid is sort of experienced in one form or another, and I would argue that you and other people at some point had been afraid in the night of some shadow on their wall, so if I can make a movie on that basic fear of shadow, connect, I think that could be good. Oh my gosh. Does anyone else have a fear of shadows or a fear of the dark? Because I really do. <laughs> when you said that, I was like, oh, I get scared all the time <laughs> in the dark. I used to have to have my, like, I have to have someone walk with me outside when, uh, like, I have to let the dog out or something. Because it just freaks me out. <laughs> well, the Shadow Lurkers movie is not going to help that fear. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it, it really wasn't. Um, I, I actually was tipped off by Michelle this morning um, with that clip, the the teaser video, and it was awesome. I, because I've seen a number of indie films teaser vi videos and um, horror, and I, it just didn't catch my eye, or the quality wasn't there. But I mean, I've got to, and, and I'm not just trying to um, patch on the back, but I have to say that your teaser is incredibly awesome. I mean, oh, thank you. Super high quality and um, just the whole concept, like Michelle was saying, the whole concept of, of how this is portrayed um, Hi, is, is very viral. I, I, I really appreciate you saying that because I think there's a, an important point in that, in that YouTube oftentimes, you know, we've all seen funny videos of cats doing things and posted around, but I think it's also a platform for aspiring filmmakers. So it doesn't have to be lo-fi, and, and you make a good point, because so much is. So I actually made a, a real concerted effort to make this as as polished as I could um, and, and, and bring filmmaking to YouTube first. Um, and I appreciate that you noticed that, because that was a real effort on our part. Um, I didn't want to just do some schlocky thing. We were going to turn this into a feature film, but to start it at YouTube at a high quality, I think, um, sends a nice message to the fans. Well, you can thank um, thank Michelle. I think on her tweet, she put 
it was a call to action and I'm in, I'm in the marketing field I do social media marketing at myself so it was a great call to action and I'm even using hashtags like I dare you to watch this or um, <laughs> hashtag leave the light on I mean you it's a great teaser because it's gonna force people to say what the heck is this and watch that thing and then they're gonna share it well, yeah, thank you. I, actually, those are some good ideas. Do you mind if we steal them? <laughs> use them. Hey, use them. Okay, done. Scary hey, call Michelle, thank <laughs> And thank you, Michelle, for, for putting out the call because that's really what's going to make a difference is many people watching it and passing it on to other people because as the studios see these numbers, they'll be able to say, okay, the f people are actually behind this. Um, we all know what it's like when the studios make a huge movie and just spend a ton of money marketing at us. This is the inverse of that. This is fan support creating a swell that's going to influence the studio. So pass it on, people. Please share share the fear. <laughs> <laughs> share the fear. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, and, Andrews, uh, in earlier chats, you mentioned that you want to get some of the Google Plus community uh, involved in the movie. Yeah, absolutely. We've done a ton of Google Plus chats. And as we're meeting fans, some people brought up this idea that I think is fantastic. So I'm going to embrace it. What if we could have some of the Google Plusers, if they could make their way to our film location, be extras in the movie? And, and we're going to also document the, the making of this movie in Google Plus chat throughout. So people sort of have an insight um, before the movie even comes out. We've all seen movies where after we see the movie, we see sort of a making of or behind the scenes. But in doing it in reverse, people can have a bit of ownership in the process. So when it comes out, they can say, oh, I remember how they did that scene, or, oh, wait, maybe there's me in the back of the crowd. So as much as we can be inclusive, we're going to absolutely try. Awesome. That's awesome. I, I had a, a quick question, um, and, and it might kind of be away from, I don't want to keep it away from the actual movie, but the first time that you ever picked up a camera and really decided to, hey, I'm going to try to go ahead and, and film something here. I'm, I, I want to make a movie or a short movie. I mean, when was it and, and what kind of camera did you use and what did you have in that, at that time? What was in your head? I, that's actually, I love that question. Nobody's asked me that yet. Um, I was fresh out of school um, and I was working at, a, at Adidas, the shoe company. Uh, from an advertising perspective and as a writer and I had gone to film school and I wanted a break as a director but getting a break as a director is a catch-22. Nobody's going to give you something to film until you film something. So I sold an idea uh, to Adidas, a basketball piece, and they loved the idea but they said, you know, we just don't have enough money to produce it. I said, well, how much do you have? And they gave some insanely low number and I said without even thinking, oh, I can do it for that money. And they said, really? I said, oh, yeah, of course. Then I got, oh, my gosh, I got to actually do this. <laughs> so I literally got Super 8 cameras. I was old school. I got Super 8 film cameras because I wanted that texture. Yeah. And I shot it myself and threw myself in the deep end and brought the footage to an editor who luckily, actually, here's the irony. The first person who ever cut that piece is the same person who edited Shadow Lurkers. I, oh. That's a good, yeah, funny. I didn't. Never even thought of that connection. Yeah. Uh, and he did an amazing job. And that piece was successful. And it led to another one and another one. And um, sort of earning my stripes at Adidas, I started filming every commercial. And then we started signing guys like this kid named Kobe Bryant. And so he and I started together when he was still in high school, before he was even drafted. And he and I would you know, do pieces. And you know, those obviously blew up. And so that gave me a little more clout to get another piece. And um, before I know it, I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, shooting Gatorade spots. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love it. Will you come back to Wilmington and maybe oh, shoot some stuff? In a heartbeat. You know, Wilmington could actually, and I'm not kidding, could be a contender for where Shadow Lurkers could film because it's, it, the studios love that town. It's, it's set up for it, and it's financially a great place to shoot. So there's a good chance. You never know. Oh, my gosh. That would be awesome. We, we you know, well, we've got it, Iron Man in here right now. So I know. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Iron Man 3 is filming as you speak. But what if we brought it to Wilmington and we actually documented the filming from the get-go? Um, that could be cool. Oh, my gosh. That would be amazing. We would totally help you with that, no matter what. Hey, I'm, 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 <laughs> AC is going to come down from Virginia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Andrew, I had a, a question. Hi. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? Uh, 
Good, good. I'm actually, uh, the timing is just so funny. I haven't been on G Plus for a good few days. I live in Hawaii. I'm a filmmaker and I'm out in LA casting my feature. It's my first feature. Oh, nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Break a leg. Thank you. Jigbox hero. Um, and, um, and I so can appreciate everything that you've said about uh, doing the teaser because that's where we're at. And uh, we're raising the, the final funds. And I was curious, um, you are, it's a union project, SAG? Um, the teaser was just me. Um, it was okay. just me doing it on my own. It was totally gorilla. Of course, when we do the feature, it will be full SAG and DGA. I am a DGA member. Um, so yeah, we'll go full union, but um, as polished as that teaser looks, and I appreciate the comment, that was just me doing run and gun. Um, Good for you. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> break oh, break a leg on your project. <laughs> where, where are you? What area? Oh, I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, good. Okay. You're in LA too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, did you, um, uh, did you end up working with a casting director or you just, these are people you're familiar with? Well, in this case, um, I was actually in Richmond, Virginia filming a commercial and I, I may have alluded earlier, Spielberg was there filming a big Lincoln epic and they were on hiatus and I was in the lobby of the hotel and a bunch of the actors were hanging around and I completely shanghaied them. <laughs> I said, is there any chance you guys want to do this thing? We'll do two days of filming, we'll bang it out, and they were game. So it was very much a guerrilla style project. Oh, that's great. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm right where you're at and I love it. I love these stories and I so support you. Oh, no, thank you. And I support you. So. You can break a leg on your project. And, and if Mr. Spielberg, Steven Spielberg's out there, I'm sorry for stealing your actors, but I had to do it. You would have done it too. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't mind, the actors anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any last, um, like any kind of like last, uh, last words that you want to say, whether it's advice for other people trying to, you know, break through or I don't know, yeah. just, um, you know, you're really kind of breaking ground of what you're doing by getting the word out about shadow lurkers. Yeah. I honestly, it's advice and it's also sort of a statement on social media, which is, I think the more we think outside the box and get creative with how we make movies and how we involve the audience, I think that's going to be the evolution of the entertainment industry because fans drive this business. And up until now, fans haven't had a voice. But with Google Plus and social media and the Internet, fans can actually have a say in what kind of movies they want made. So in getting the 100,000 numbers that we're getting in a response, that's going to help get this movie made. Um, so I just really thank everybody. And, and by all means, please share shadowlurkersmovie.com. Pass it around and help us get the movie made. We'll do everything that we can. We appreciate all of your time. I know that you've got other things to do, but we will well, thank you. You know, link you up. And then if we put it on the newscast, we will send that to you too. So I, um, I really appreciate it. And, and let's come back. We can do a follow-up and see how we're doing. Yes, keep us posted. We want to we okay. hear how your meetings go. Absolutely. You got it. Okay. Thanks, cool. everybody, for well, joining. Thank you, everybody, for chatting. I really appreciate it. Break a leg on your project. Thanks for the comment. <laughs> cool. See you guys. See you guys Bye. around. Bye. Bye.